Our next speaker is uh, Michael Kerr from the Center for Healthy Aging, and he will give us more insight into the loss of muscle function with age. Thank you very much, and thank you for the uh, invitation to Morten and the organizers of this meeting. I'm going to shift a little bit uh, gear now and talk about uh, tissue, namely the skeletal muscle, uh, in relation to aging and uh, its adaptability to be trained also in late age. Uh, and ask the question, is it ever uh, too late uh, to uh, do this uh, improvement training of skeletal muscle. And if we start with this sort of very well-known picture, first in the top where you can see the drop of uh, skeletal muscle mass with, uh, with aging in a cross-sectional manner, then the lower part you can see the schematic picture showing that there is a loss of muscle mass. And here it's uh, very diplomatic put that there is a difference between individuals. But the the, the big question is still to what extent is this loss unavoidable uh, and to what extent is it more a question of lifestyle factors. So the first question I want to raise is to, to what extent can high skeletal muscle mass in fact be maintained with lifelong strength training. And here we're talking about people who really have been training all their lives. And if you look at the, at the figure up there, you can uh, see with the, with the open circles the results from the Masters Championship of weightlifting where you can follow people all the way from the age of 35 and up to the group of uh, 80 uh, plus people who have made this competition. And be aware that this is obviously, let's say, the chosen ones. They're, those are the very, very few, but it still tells us what is achievable in these individuals. And uh, what you obviously can see is that there is a drop with uh, time. And although it's cross-sectional in matter, it still shows us that it's unavoidable that there will be some loss. I've indicated with the, with the red line that if these individuals stop training, they probably will use mu uh, lose muscle more. Note another thing, and that is that the, the dark circles showing the best marathon running times, not in people who do strength training, but in people who are endurance trained, and it basically follows the same line. So it's not special for skeletal muscle. There are also other aspects in the body that will decline with age. And finally, the message here is also, although it's not a line put in, I've just put in the approximate strength for 20, 25-year-old young individuals who do not train. And you will very often see if you compare the best master athletes of 70, 75-year-old, they will be similar to people who are 30 to 50 years younger. So a well-trained 70-year-old will be equal to an untrained 20-year-old. So this is trying to look at the avoidance of losing muscle mass by strength training. The next question I want to raise is the question of whether endurance exercise can do anything to mimic our loss with, of muscle mass with aging. I think clearly all in this room agree that if you do endurance exercise, you will not gain big muscles. But what if you do lifelong endurance training? Will that avoid this loss in uh, skeletal muscle or at least to some extent limit it? And this is then a study done some years ago where people at the age of around 65 years of age um, are investigated. And these are people who've been doing long distance running for 30 years. They've done several marathon runs. They're not in the elite elite, but they are constantly training with endurance exercise. But they have never done strength exercise. They actually tried to avoid it, but they would do a lot of endurance running. And you can see how much they have been training here. They were then compared to old individuals or elderly people at around 60 to 70, which were comparable in the sense that these were not just uh, taken from the general population 
population they were taking as people who had a comparable B BMI. They had no risk factors for, for lifestyle diseases. They lived a healthy life uh, and did take no medicine. The only difference was they did not do endurance exercise. They were untrained. And you can see here that the cross-section area of the muscle by MRI is larger in the old or elderly trained individuals uh, than it is in the untrained one. A comparable group for young individuals, again, endurance trained young ones and endurance trained untrained ones were also included. And what you can see here is that there is a declining effect of muscle cross-section area with age, but there is also always a little bit higher muscle cross-section area in the ones that have done endurance training. So, of course, this is cross-sectional, but at least it indicates that the ones that have done endurance training are not as low as the one that hasn't done any training at all. An interesting aspect was that despite the fact they were not doing strength training, you can see to the left where there are four uh, columns there that the old trains, which are the ones to the most right, that they had a down regulation and MRI, uh, mRNA on myostatin, which would be a growth, muscle growth inhibitor, and they also had a down regulation of uh, a muscle breakdown stimulator, the MRF-1, and this is taken from muscle biopsies from their thigh. And even more so interesting is that if you look at inflammatory markers, and I'm just showing you here C-reactive protein as an indicator, but the same pattern was there for TNF-alpha and IL-6. There you can see that there seems to be an inverse relationship. So there is an effect of having a lower C-reactive protein when you are trained and a rise with uh, age. And you can see on the scale that we're not talking about high inflammation levels. These are still within the normal range. So even with 15 people in each of these groups, there were significant differences. And again, quite puzzling, the old trained or the elderly trained had approximately the same level C reactive protein as the young untrained ones. So I think that it at least uh, suggests that uh, inflammation could play a role, but it doesn't show us anything about course and effect here. And just to take the discussion on inflammation one step further, this is now an experiment in very old people who uh, were admitted to the geriatric ward because they had some general disease, and, but they were still able to do a training. And they were then asked over a little less than a two-week period to do strength training with one leg, whereas the other leg would be uh, resting. And all of these individuals who participated were not so sick that they couldn't participate. And an interesting thing was when we afterwards looked at CRP values, and now we're talking about much more dramatic CRP values, you could see, despite the big scatter, that this seems to be an inverse relationship. So the higher CRP value you have, the less you get out of the strength training. And in fact, if you separate them in individuals who had CRP values above 50 and those who were below 50, despite the fact that they were equally, so to speak, sick, they did exactly the same training, only the ones that had lower CRP values would actually improve uh, in uh, the, uh, the training here. That could be uh, very interesting for practical use, but also to go further into the mechanism there. So the next question would then be, how much improvement can you actually gain if you have never done strength training and you now want to begin to do strength training? And I want to focus on the early aging, 65 to 70, and also on the very old ones. And the first study here is a, an attempt to compare people between 60 and 70, average age of 67 years of age, with young individuals. And you can see on the, on the top uh, graph there, on uh, graph A, where uh, it's indicated what, how much they could lift one time, the maximal force that they could lift one time. And the open circles are the young ones, and the closed circles are the elderly ones. And you can see that the young ones are stronger when the training uh, started, but 13 weeks later, when they did regular strength training, they had improved, as had also the elderly. And in fact, if you look to the right top there, MVC of isometric and isokinetic strength, you can see that the maximum strength improvement 
is exactly the same in the young and the uh, elderly individuals. And if you look at the lower graph with MRI again, cross-section area, whether you measure this only at the vastus lateralis muscle or the whole quadriceps muscle, there is exactly the same improvement in young and elderly individuals. So despite some of the studies out there are saying that your ability to gain muscle strength maybe already declines when you are 50, I think this data and also some other data would support the view that all the way up to basically 65, 70, the potential of improvement in strength is still present. Um, then if we go take it a bit further and look at the very old here, muscle biopsies from 83 to 94 year old, where you can see that the fiber area, and when you look at the type one slow fibers and the type two fast fibers, you can see that the old compared to the young, it's predominantly the type two fibers, the fast fibers that will atrophy. And if you split it up into men, males and females, you can see that in, in the males, this is the, the picture in, in females here, it's actually both fiber types that are a little bit decreasing. And these individuals went through now a 12 weeks uh, heavy strength training program to see the improvement. And although it looks like the fiber size gets a little bit bigger and the satellite cells are uh, a little bit more uh, uh, frequent, it did not obtain statistical significance. Neither so did the number of myonuclei or the ratio between the myonuclei and the cytoplasm or the myonuclei domain, which is very often measured. So, it's not a dramatic change that happens in these individuals. If we look at the MRI scans, you saw before there was a small difference in the fiber type area where we couldn't detect the difference. Here there was a statistically significant uh, uh, difference, but note it's about 2%. So it is far from the improvements that you have when you're 70. And to the right and the bottom, I want to take this picture because this illustrates, again, despite some scatter, it shows again an inverse relationship bet between the improvement and the starting size of the muscle fiber because it's been claimed out there that when you get very old and get very, very small muscle fibers, it's point of no return and you will not be able to do that. This would argue a little bit in contrast if you have the ones that had the smallest muscle fibers were actually the ones that had the most gain here. So it's probably never too late in this relation. So bringing it all together here, you can say that there is a arguments that the muscle improvement, if you want to do strength training, is approximately the same in 20 to 30 year old as it is in 60 to 70 year old, uh, whereas if you go up to around 90, it will probably decrease. And I put a question mark on the age uh, uh, in the interval from 75 to 85, but it's probably in that range if you look at the literature with regards to that. So the final thing I want to touch upon is now, Having the ability to have all this muscle, can that, uh, is that good or bad? Is, can you actually use it without getting a lot of injuries where you will be uh, very damaged if you, if you do that? And if you look at master athletes and you looked on the, on the columns to the left, you can see that if you compare high school and college athlete with master athletes, it's by far more dangerous to be a master athlete. But the point is that there are so few master athletes. There are very few master athletes. So if you take the elderly population as a whole and look at them running or doing weightlifting or whatever they do, then you cannot find a more frequent sports injury number in those than it is in young one. And as it's stated in the top here, the worst population you can be in is between the fourth and the sixth decade of life being a male in a somewhat poor condition. That's the highest risk for getting an injury. Does that mean that the tissue is very poor in regenerating? I just showed you that the people around 65 are still able to improve in muscle strength. And here is shown basically the same data in figure A, but now we had one leg doing regular strength training and the other leg had been subjected to very intense electrical stimulation before they started the training. And the original idea was when you get older, you have more connective tissue. So maybe we could break up some of that in order to get better improvement. But as you can see, the two curves for both the young and the old ones go together. So there's absolutely no beneficial effect. But what I want to point out is the number of regenerating fibers when you repair your muscle again and the number of stem cells 
cells, satellite cells, is exactly the same with some scatter, but still the same in young and elderly. So at least up to the age of 65, it might be that you somewhat repair a little bit slower, but you seem to have the same potential for repairing the muscle after damage in that. So concluding here, muscle mass and strength in lifelong resistance trained equivalates to that of 30 to 50 years younger untrained individuals. And further, if you do endurance training, that might have a somewhat muscle-preserving effect, potentially due to stimulation of protein-regulating pathways and through anti-inflammatory effects of training. Some genetically unique master athletes can perform very well in high age, Hypertrophy response, satellite cell response, and muscle regeneration capacity seems to maintain at least up to the age of 65 to 70. And in very old, 85 plus, the ability to achieve training-induced improvement in muscle strength and mass is somewhat limited. And finally, higher musculoskeletal injury rates with aging are primarily seen in master athletes, whereas moderate physical activity is associated with a lower injury rate in elderly individuals compared to younger. And with these words, and thanking the people at my lab, especially Anas Carlsen, Abigail Mackey, for their contribution, I thank you for your attention. talk. Um, do we have questions in the audience? Um, otherwise we will... Ah, we have one question here. From various studies and also it's our experience in the lab, there is a complete disconnect in terms of endurance exercise between muscle function and muscle mass. Uh, muscle function can be high or low and muscle mass high or low, and I wanted to have your comment, it's only for endurance exercise that uh, and all companies are looking for drugs that increase muscle mass, but nobody looks at drugs that increase six minute work. So I wanted to have your comment on that. I, I certainly agree with you. I mean, I, 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 my presentation today was quite simplistic because it was only on the muscle mass. But I know, and our own lab does the same, there is a lot of studies going on, actually more looking at the neuromuscular change with aging. And that's, I mean, a lot of people have looked into it, but maybe not enough people what actually is happening, especially the versatility. What we see, and I didn't present the result, is also that in the very old ones, you see a quite marked functional improvement that goes beyond, beyond the 2 to 3% improvement in, in the muscle mass. So I certainly agree with you that there is a dissociation. And uh, it, I mean, this would basically just say that if you only look at the muscle mass, I think the, the, the possibility of improvement is limited there. But, but I certainly agree with you that the improvements, and some of you might also say if you're 70, you only have an improvement of, of 10% over, over 12 weeks, that doesn't show what you, how much stronger you actually get. So I think the whole neuromuscular uh, and, the, and the neural innovation of the muscle is extremely important. And there, if I gave the presentation on the function, it would be somewhat different. But it would still go a little bit down compared in the old ones than the young ones. But the data out there has always said, oh yeah, but the old people, if you have poorer results, it's just because they don't train as hard. But a lot of these studies are really pushing them to the, to the limit, so yeah. Okay, and we have one more question from Andrea Meyer. Thanks for the great talk. Um, increasing muscle mass means protein synthesis, so I would like to hear your opinion just in one sentence about um, diet and diet plus for resistance exercise training, etc. Of course, it might be um, that at all the age, we are just looking at buyers because these individuals yeah. have a very low protein intake and therewith are not able to, to make muscle mass. No, I totally agree. I mean, a lot of the studies have been not very successful in younger individuals adding protein if they have sufficient intake. And a lot of the uh, uh, supporting results or encouraging result in elderly people using nutritional supplement, especially protein, has been because you basically bring them up from a deficient situation to an adequate situation. And those studies who looked at people who had adequate intake, uh, it's not been that encouraging just to give extra protein. And, and in those studies, we were very aware even in the patients who were at the hospital, that they got way above uh, the recommended level. So that, 
at least try to be taken out of the equation. But we have not in the very old measure truly uh, protein synthesis and breakdown, but others have done, done that. And, and there seems to be an activation potential still. But I would think that a lot of the protein administration is more a question of bringing them up to the, to the adequate level rather than giving four times as much will give you any extra result. Um, we have time for one more question, oh, maybe from the flag, one. one of the more upvoted questions. Um, Maria Tyson, she's asking how does endurance training uh, maintain the skeletal muscle? Yeah, but I mean, that I, I didn't show any proof of that, but I think there has been uh, presentations also uh, earlier at this uh, conference showing that, that uh, the maintenance of uh, mitochondrial function, for instance, um, could be one. Uh, explanation that that actually will will mimic the pro the protein breakdown and that in that way it could do so because we have not been able to show that you can improve the muscle just by doing that but you probably can avoid a little bit uh, of the fall that young trained people endurance trained have a little bit higher muscle than the others there can be other courses for that but but I think that that uh, that the inhibiting the inflammatory pathway and uh, also uh, having an, a good oxidative uh, capacity would be two factors that at least could influence the protein breakdown uh, in, a, in a beneficial way so you don't lose as much. Um, and the interesting thing is that it might be that inflammation plays an important role, but if you immobilize, and I didn't show that here, if you immobilize old people and then give them, uh, let's say, anti-inflammatory drug during the bed rest, you would still lose the muscle. So it seems like muscle contraction just at a low level is still helping you a little bit. But if that, together with the drug, could do something, that's the open question, of course. Okay, great. Thanks for yeah. joining us today, and maybe we can give another applause.